topic today is going to be solving system of equations using elimination. And we've already done some solving of systems of equations, but we used graphing. We graphed both equations and figured out where the line crossed. Uh, and there's a way to do this. Actually, there's a couple different ways to do this. We're going to focus on the one called elimination today. But there's ways to do this where you can set up an equation um, and actually solve and figure out what x and y is. And remember what I was saying before, we graphed both lines. So maybe this line went like this and this line went like this. And we found where those two points crossed. And we said the solution to both of those equations, and in this case it would be like maybe you know, 4, 3 or something like that. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to figure out x equals blank and y equals blank, but we're going to do it without drawing this graph. We're going to use this equation right here. So I'm going to erase this and we'll show you how this works. And again, the first time we do this, we're going to talk about using elimination. So in order to do this, it's easiest, I think, if you have your equation set up like this. Now this is different than what we looked at before. Before our equation would look like y equals you know the slope times x plus where it crossed the y-intercept at, something like this. If you notice my equation over here is in a different form, it's not in this y equals mx plus b form. This makes it easier to solve the system of equations using elimination. So if you have to move some of these terms around uh, to get x and y on the same side, for instance, like if you started with an equation like this, all you would have to do is minus 3x here, and then you would minus 3x on the other side, and this would be your equation in this form. So let's take a look at the two we have here. And again, our goal is we're trying to find out if we did graph these, where would the two points cross at? Where would they meet at? But we're going to do it using this method. So elimination you know, it kind of means what it sounds like. We're trying to get rid of something. And what we're trying to get rid of is either the x's or the y's. We're trying to get rid of one or the other. We can do it both ways. So what I've done is I've wrote this equation twice, and we are going to take a look at the same problem twice so I can show you the two different ways you could accomplish this. So what I want to do right now is I want to focus on these y's here. I want to get rid of these y's. So in order to do that, we have to kind of think back to our positive and negative number concepts, the concept of if you have negative 1 and you have positive 1, that makes 0. Those two cancel out, negative 1 and positive 1. Or like negative 7 and positive 7 cancel out. We want these two things to be opposite so we can cancel them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this at 2y. And I'm going to try to make this be negative 2y. Because if I get this to be negative 2y, then we can cancel those two out and all we'll have left to work with is the x's. Now how you do that is you can multiply this entire line right here by the same number and it won't change what the x's or the y's will be at the end. Uh, it's kind of like almost when you have an equal fraction like two fifths is equal to four tenths. If you multiply everything by the same thing it's going to stay an equal fraction. Same thing here. If I multiply this whole line by the same thing uh, it's going to say the same in the context of the question. So I'm going to try to make this negative 2. So in order to make this negative 2, I've got to multiply everything by negative 2 because this is basically 1y. So I'm just going to put out to the side times negative 2. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dot so you don't get confused that that's not x or something like that. So I'm going to put times negative 2. So I'm going to multiply everything in this top line by negative 2. So now I have negative 2y I have to multiply this by negative 2, so I have negative 8x, and I have to multiply this by negative 2, which I have negative 16. So now I'm going to go through this canceling out process. So what I mean is now I've got 2y and negative 2y. I can cross those out because if I add down, is basically what I'm doing here, that equals 0. Now I've got to also add down on the other two. So now I have negative 8 and positive 5. We're not worrying about this 4x anymore because we multiplied this by 2 to get this negative 8. So I'm really only concentrating on this number and this number right here, positive 5. So if I do that, I get 
negative 3x. Same thing here. I'm going to concentrate on this number, and then we didn't change this one, so we'll keep this one. Do that problem. We'll keep it equal sign there. Negative 16 and 13 would be negative 3. So now I've got this nice, simple problem right here where I can just solve for x. And if I solve for x here, of course, x would just be 1. So we know what x is. So out of my two numbers I'm going to have at the end, I know x is 1. So now what we can do is we can go back to any of the original equations that we had, and I can put 1 in for x. So I'm just going to go back to this very first equation that I had right here, and I'm going to put 1 in for x. So my equation is going to look like 1y plus 4 times 1, because I'm putting 1 in for x, equals 8. Now we just have to solve this, and we'll get what y is. So this would be 4, 4 times 1, equals 8, plus 1y. Um, I will subtract 4 and subtract 4. Now I have 1y equals 4, and that's it right there. That's done because that's y equals 4. So my y is 4, and my final answer to this is 1 comma 4. Y or x is 1, y is 4. And if we did in fact graph this, we would see that both of these lines did cross at 1, 4. That's where they would cross at. I'm going to show you how to do this again in a different way. But before I do that, I want you to understand that now that we have this, you should be able to put 1 in for x and 4 in for y on this equation, this equation, this equation, and it should work out just fine. Let me prove that to you quickly here. 2 times y would be 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times x, which would be 5 times 1, would be 5. Add those together, we do get 13 like it says right there. So you should always be able to check back and prove that you are correct. Now, we've got the same equation going on here, and I'm going to do something different. This is actually the longer way to do it, but when the problems get tougher, you're going to have to make a decision anyways, and it probably is going to be more difficult. We canceled out the y's last time. I'm going to cancel out the x's this time. So it's going to take a little bit more work to get these two to be opposites. So I'm going to think, what could I change both of those two to, uh, in order to cancel them out? So to do that, I am going to make one of these negative 20 and one of these positive 20, because that's the easiest thing we can multiply. It's almost like finding common denominators. 20, these can both go into 20. So one of these has to end up being positive, one of them has to end up being negative. So I'll just do, I'll make the top one negative. It doesn't matter, but I'll make the top one negative. I'll do multiply by negative 5 to make that negative 20, x. And I'll do multiply by positive 4 to make that positive 20x. Now these are going to cancel out, which is good. But remember, I've got to multiply everything on this top line by negative 5. And I've got to multiply everything on this bottom line by 4. So if I multiply this, that's like 1y. This by this, that's negative 5y. And if I multiply this by this, that's negative 40. And if I come down to the bottom and I do this multiplied by this, that's 8y. I've already got my this. And then my 4 times 13, that would be 52. Now we're set to use elimination. We can eliminate some things. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to eliminate this and eliminate this. Now remember, I'm only focusing on the numbers I changed to. So I'm focusing on this number and this number. And we'll put those together. That will equal 3y. I'll focus on this number and this number. If I put those two together, we'll remember our equal sign, that would be 12. So if I solve this, 3y equals 12, y is, of course, 4. So now we've got the first part of our problem. We don't know the first number yet, but the second number is 4. And if you look back at the past one we just did, it's the same problem. We got 4 for y, which we should. Now we have to go back to any one of these problems. We could do the ones we changed them to. We can do these right here. Y is 4. So I'm just going to take this one right here. So my problem is anytime I see a Y, I'm putting 4 in for it. So I have 1 times 4, because Y is 4, plus 4X equals 8. 
So I'll do 1 times 4, I get 4, plus 4x equals 8. I will get rid of this 4. 4x equals 4. And of course, 4 times 1 is 4, so my x is 1. And again, 1, 4 should work for this. It should work for this. It should work for this. And it should work for that.